today we are going to speak about post operative lung complications this is relevant in a case of general anesthesia by definition it is respiratory complications that occur within 48 to 72 hours following surgery or specifically following general anesthesia conditions affecting the respiratory tract that can adversely influence clinical course of the patient after surgery so the this is a case of morbidity of the patient following general anesthesia thirdly the definition is also any pulmonary abnormality occurring in the post operative period that produces identifiable disease or dysfunction that is clinically significant and adversely affects the clinical course of the patient what is the incidence post operative lung complication or specifically it is called post operative pulmonary complication ppc are common costly and increases patient morbidity and mortality it occurs in 5 to 10% patients of non thoracic surgery in thoracic surgery the lung is involved because the lung is handled by the surgeon but in non thoracic surgery neither the lungs nor the heart are touched so it is as high as 5 to 10% in non thoracic surgery and in patients with poor lung function the and high risk patients the incidence can be as high as 22% even in very short duration of ga the risk is there it can be 1 to 2% so no one is above risk in case of general anesthesia the lung is always involved effect of ga on the lung changes to the respiratory system occur immediately on induction of general anesthesia we had spoken about induction of general anesthesia when the patient is put to sleep and muscle relaxant is added and the tube is passed into the through the larynx into the trachea this is induction so the changes occur immediately on induction of general anesthesia the respiratory drive and muscle function are altered the lung volume is reduced and atelectasis develops in more than 75% of patients who receive a muscle relaxant neuromuscular blocking drug the respiratory system may take at least 6 weeks to return to its pre operative state after general anesthesia for any major surgery a major surgery meaning a surgery which lasts for more than one and a half hours we had spoken about mechanical ventilation of the lung during ga when the patient is put on the relaxant the patient is intubated and the machine we use the anesthesia machine we have to physically pump in oxygen and nitrous oxide into the patient for the oxygenation of the patient's blood 
this is called intermittent positive pre pressure ventilation or IPPV. Changes occur in lung compliance and resistance. What is resistance? When the tracheobronchial tree is compromised and constricted as in bronchial asthma, there is resistance of the lung. What is compliance? Compliance com comprises of the thoracic cage, the lungs themselves, except for the resistance part, everything else is compliance of the lung, the alveoli. If they are compliance is high, that means the there is a compromise in the thoracic cage and or maybe the lungs only. It decreases the efficiency of gas exchange by altering the intrapulmonary distribution of ventilation. So when we put from outside, normally what we do, we breathe from inside. Our diaphragm goes down, the chest increases in volume and we suck in air into the lungs. But here just the opposite happens. The lung is static and it has to be ventilated from outside. So the gas exchange occurs by force. So there is a de definite change in the intrapulmonary distribution of oxygen. The alveolar hypoperfusion and increase in alveolar dead space occurs. Because we are putting pressure from outside, the dead space, that is the space which is occupied by the ga gas, oxygen, which does not take part in the transfer of oxygen into the blood, that is the dead space. So the dead, dead space increases. Positive end expiratory pressure is applied in increased lung resistance which causes further decrease in perfusion. What is positive end expiratory pressure? You will find some patients of bronchial asthma who do this while breathing out. What is this? They are causing a resistance back into the lung so that the alveoli are dilated and the gas exchange occurs. This occurs automatically in a patient of, we will talk about it later, COPD. So PEEP is put in in a patient of compromised lung and this further decreases the perfusion in, in the lung. Associated use of drugs such as volatile anesthetic agents, we have spoken of halothane, sevoflurane, isoflurane, which are adjuvant volatile drugs during, given during general anesthesia. So these associated drugs will exaggerate the degree of ventilation perfusion mismatch. What is ventilation perfusion mismatch? Ventilation is called V and perfusion is called Q. So there is a definite ratio between ventilation and perfusion. When the ventilation decreases, so the perfusion also decreases, the oxygenation of the blood also decreases. This is called ventilation perfusion mismatch. Pulmonary barotrauma results from over distension of bronchioles and alveoli with subsequent rupture into the perivascular sheets of adjacent vessels. What does it mean? When we inflate the lung from outside, some alveoli, they are like bubbles or multiple small, small balloons. They burst. What happens when they burst? The each alveoli has capillaries all around them. So the alveoli gets oxygen 
the capillaries take the oxygen from the alveoli, ventilation and perfusion. So, when the, we increase the pressure, positive pressure by ventilating, these small alveoli, some of them burst. And so, what happens? They, they, they burst into the perivascular sheet that is the sheet which con contains the blood vessels. So, there automatically there is an increase in dead space. Absence of psi, when after a while, every one of us, we sigh, that is, take a deep breath. Why do we do it? So that the collapsed alveoli open up. But in case of intermittent positive pressure ventilation, IPPV, there is no psi mechanism. So, the, the alveoli which are collapsed remain collapsed. Effect of mechanical ventilation on the heart. What does IPPV do to the heart? When the chest wall is blown up, the cardiac output decreases because blood from the vessels are compromised. How? The right heart output is decreased because the vena cava, superior and inferior, they are collapsed because of increased pressure in the thoracic cage. So, they cannot pump in blood into the right heart. So, the right heart also cannot pump blood into the lungs. So, there is a decrease in cardiac output into the lungs and from the lungs into the left heart, that less amount of blood is given. So, there is a decrease, total decrease in cardiac output. The rise in intrathoracic pressure also results in decreasing regional blood flow, that is blood flow in the aorta, in the great vessels, they are also compromised because of inflated lung thoracic cage. And so, they, it further decreases the cardiac output. What are the risk factors involving pulmonary complications. There can, they can be divided into those which can be modified and those which cannot be modified. So, the modifiable complications are, risk factors are diabetes, hypertension, hypothyroid, anemia, smoking, Regulating the muscle relaxant, the amount of muscle relaxant we give can be regulated. We avoid a Ryles tube because a Ryles tube causes the diaphragm to work less. So, we avoid a Ryles tube in any, in these cases and so, and also if there is a respiratory infection, of, we obviously treat the infection before putting the patient under GA. But there are some non-modifiable risk factors which cannot be modified by the doctors, which are the patient has bronchial asthma, we can only give bronchodilators. If the patient has emphysema, we cannot do anything. Because emphysema is what? When the alveoli break and adjacent alveoli keep on breaking and they form a huge cavity. This cavity is a, is a dead space because there are no vessels surrounding this cavity. This is an emphysema. We cannot change the emphysema. If the patient has kyphoscoliosis of the spine, 
if the patient has plural, pleural effusion or a thickened pleura, if the patient has aspirated, aspiration is one thing we fear the most because aspiration can cause morbidity and mortality also. If the patient is aged more than 65 years, if he is obese and has a sleep apnea, you all must have read in medicine what is sleep apnea, I am not going into the details. The, in patients with sleep apnea, in the recovery room, the patient, when the tube is taken out from the endotracheal tube is taken out, the, if the patient goes into a sleep apnea, the tongue falls back and the patient can have an increase in CO2 and a decrease in oxygen in the blood. What are the risk stratification and how do we reduce the risk? By performing short duration GA. Nowadays we have minimally invasive surgery like lap coli, lap appendix and all. Here, the ch because it is a shorter duration GA, the chances of complication becomes less. We use, in case of bad lung, we use a combination of GA and regional anesthesia so that the lung is not totally compromised. Atelectasis can be prevented or treated by adequate analgesia. When the, there is an abdominal operation, the chances are there that the patient won't take deep breath because of the pain and if the patient doesn't take deep breath, the alveoli start collapsing which leads to atelectasis. So if we give analgesia, the patient's pain, pain is less and pain, patient can be asked to take deep breath, so the atelectasis can be prevented. Incentive spirometry, take the spirometer and try, tell the patient to blow into it and see the curve. Deep breathing exercises, this is done by the physiotherapist after operation, patient is made to take deep breath. Continuous, continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP is one thing we use and these days you must have heard about BiPAP. These are used in post-operative patient who have lung problem. Early mobilization is very important if the patient is made to stand up, automatically the chances of hypostatic pneumonia is reduced. What is hypostatic pneumonia? When the patient lies down for a while, Secretions assemble, get collected in the lung, patient is not coughing it out and these secretions can get infected and cause pneumonia. This is called hypostatic pneumonia. The, we are talking about aspiration. The main reason for post-operative pneumonia is aspiration. Aspiration is deadly. Acute lung injury is the most serious complication of pulmonary complications post-operatively and we are going to talk about it in a bit. So what are the complications which arise after GA in the complications in the lung? Number one is atelectasis, we had spoken about it. Number two is pneumonia and the bronchitis. What is bronchitis? The tracheobronchial tree gets irritated. Bronchitis may be septic or aseptic. When there is bronchitis, there is secretion in, inside the bronchus and so the chances of oxygenation, of air ventilation is compromised. So pneumonia, bronchitis, 
bronchospasm as in bronchial asthma when the muscles in the bronchioles are constricted and there is edema in the submucosal layer of the bronchioles and the bronchus. There can be exacerbation of previous lung disease. Pulmonary collapse may be there due to mucus plugs of the airway. As I had already said, this sets in when the patient is lying down, patient is not taking deep breath, mucus plugs accumulate and they get infected and or they can plug the airway, so increasing the dead space and decreasing the ventilation perfusion. Patients can go into respiratory failure, that is patient can need a post-operative ventilator for more, maybe more than 48 hours. Acute lung injury, what are they? They include aspiration pneumonitis, transfusion related acute lung injury. When we are giving blood, there is a chance of minor blood group mismatch. We always do a broad typing of ABO RH blood group. But you have already learned that there are many minor blood groups which we do not test. And if the patient gets multiple blood from multiple donor, these can interact, the minor blood group can interact and they can they can co cause coagulation inside the blood vessels proper, but they can also cause a transfusion related lung injury. And lastly, you must have read a lot about ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, because in COVID, a lot of patients are affected with ARDS. Last but not least is pulmonary embolism. We will talk about what is pulmonary embolism in a bit later. What are the grades of lung complication? Grade 1 is any deviation from the normal post-operative course without the need of any drugs or surgical, endoscopic or radiological intervention. That is minor atelectasis of the lung which postoperatively gets corrected with just physiotherapy or incentive spirometry. This is grade 1. What is grade 2? It requires treatment with drugs. For example, pneumonia which may require antibiotics in the ward and bronchospasm which requires a bronchodilator. Grade 3, it may require surgical, endoscopic, radiological intervention. For example, a bronchoscopic suction may be required to clear the mucus plug from the blocked airway. A chest tube may have to be placed if there is a pleural effusion postoperatively or a pneumothorax. Grade 2 and grade 3 require non-invasive ventilation and pharmacological effects of treatment. Non-invasive ventilation is, we know, we have talked about BiPAP. BiPAP machines are now readily used in the ICU to give a non-invasive ventilation to the patient. Grade 4 is bad. It is life-threatening condition requiring intensive care admission and grade 4A is only when the lung is involved and patient requires ventilation and antibiotics and bronchodilators and grade 4B is worse if the other systems also get involved. Coming to the complications, 
atelectasis. This refers to a partial collapse of the small airway. The tracheobronchial tree starting from the trachea downwards has 23 generations of bronchus, bronch bronchiole and the different types of bronchioles up to the alveolus. So, there can be a partial collapse in the bronchioles. This is leading to atelectasis. Majority of the post-operative patients will develop some degree of atelectasis. We have spoken about it. It is a clinical precursor or contributor to other post-operative pulmonary complication. This is just the beginning. Atelectasis is just the beginning of further downstream complications. Current theories suggest that airway collapse is due to a combination of airway compression, alveolar gas resorption, the gas in the alveoli gets resolved into the blood, blood. if it is 100% oxygen, the oxygen is taken up by the blood and so there is no air in the uh, alveolus, it collapses. When normally we breathe in, we breathe in 90, 80% uh, nitrogen and 20% oxygen. This nitrogen keeps the alveolar inflated. But when we are doing a GA, giving IPPV, there is no nitrogen. There is only nitrous oxide and oxygen, both of which can be absorbed into the bloodstream. So, this can lead to alveolar collapse. Current theory, pulmonary complications include hypoxemia, reduced lung compliance, pulmonary infection and acute respiratory failure. So, what we had been speaking, atelectasis is just the beginning of the show and then all the problems start. Pneumonia and bronchitis. Prevention of, of pneumonia includes coughing and deep breathing exercises with incentive spirometer, oral hygiene with savlon, <coughs> walking, sitting up to eat and a elevated bed rest, head rest just post operatively when the patient is comfortable and can be made to recline, not lie down straight. Ventilator associated pneumonia. What happens when we patient is put on ventilator? There are other patients who had had infection. They may have had infection and so the ventilator inside there is organism. All the organisms cannot be cleared because the ventilator inside the ventilator it cannot be sterilized. It's, it's a complicated thing with electronics. The tubes are sterilized but inside the ventilator there can be organisms which are still there. So the next patient can develop ventilator associated pneumonia or called VAP. Majority of post operative pneumonia is caused by gram negative aerobic bacteria including Pseudomonas, Klebsiella and Enterobacters. And with regards to gram positive, it is the worst, the methicillin resistant Staph aureus, which is called MRSA in short. MRSA is deadly because most of the drugs, the antibiotics fail to act on MRSA. Next comes bronchospasm. When there is an existing bronchial asthma, when the tracheobronchial tree is irritable, there can be an irritable tracheobronchial tree when we just after induction, there leads to spasm of the 
alveoli and the bronchioles and the bronchus. This is a irritable tracheobronchial tree. Induction related to, to airway irritation. We can just by induction the airway irritation we have just spoken. Tube can be misplaced, tube can be put into one lung. When the lung bifurcates, the tube can be put into one lung, usually the right lung, light uh, bronchus because it is more or less straight and the left is a bit deviated. So the tube here, the whole left lung is not being ventilated. Aspiration can cause bronchospasm. Pulmonary edema of unknown cause, Pul lung edema that is interstitial edema. The alveoli are there, the blood vessels are there and in between alveoli there is an interstitial space. When this space, the fluid gets accumulated in the space, they cause a shifting of the alveoli and there is again a ventilation perfusion mismatch. NSAIDs and beta blockers. We give for hypertension, patient is put on beta blockers which causes bronchoconstriction. For NSAIDs also cause bronchoconstriction, bronchospasm. So these two drugs can be a potential in increasing the spasm of the bronchias. Exacerbation of previous lung disease. We had been speaking of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a spectrum of disease from emphysema to asthma. So it is this long spectrum, here is asthma, here is emphysema. So anything in between, there can be little asthma, more emphysema or more asthma, little emphysema. But this is a spectrum where both of them exist simultaneously. When there is a deteriorating dyspnea, because of COPD, the lungs are collapsed and patient is dyspnea. There is prurulent sputum because of COPD and any bronchial secretion with a volume of more than 10 mL per 24 hours is deadly. Patient can have post-operative fever without any cause. The lungs are okay but there is fever. So, so it is difficult to pinpoint where the fever is originating. Patient can have wheezing. You know, when you breathe out per force, if there is a sound like a whistle, that is called wheezing. So, if the post in the, in the lung diseases, all these occur postoperatively. Mucus plugs. A mucus plug is a buildup of mucus in the airway. We had spoken about it commonly occurs during and after surgery because of inadequate cuff. The patient cannot cuff because the patient in the abdominal surgery, patient tries to not to take deep breath or cuff because it hurts. Drugs given during surgery make breathing less deep. All the drugs which we give, the muscle relaxant, the analgesic, the adjuvants, they all cause the breathing to be less. So automatically the normal secretions which in us when we are normally going around, these normal secretions come out into the mouth and are absorbed into the gut. But in this case, there is a stoppage of these normal secretions coming out leading to mucus plug. 
Suctioning the lung during surgery helps clear them, but sometimes they still build up. During surgery, after surgery, what we do is we do a suction of the trachea and the bronchus to see that there are no mucus plug there. But what about the bronchioles down? You, the tube, we cannot suck that. So this is a partial measure. Respiratory failure is a very bad complication. It is due to pneumonia, atelectasis, pleural effusion, aspiration, compromised airway, acute respiratory distress syndrome, transfusion-related acute lung injury, fat or pulmonary embolism. We are going to speak about pulmonary embolism. Opiate-related respiratory depression. When we give pethidine, morphine, or fentanyl, these are opioids, they all cause a respiratory depression and when we give it postoperatively, the, there is a respiratory depression in the way that the frequency of respiration is decreased. When the frequency is decreased, there is a chance of CO2 accumulating inside the lungs and can lead to respiratory failure or the worst is a respiratory arrest the lungs stop the lungs stop working at all it does not patient does not take breath breath independently pulmonary embolism pulmonary embolism is a blood clot in the lungs these clots form in the deep vents of the leg a condition known as deep vein thrombosis if the clot breaks loose and moves through the vena cava, it is called venous thromboembolism and may represent a life-threatening condition. A pulmonary embolism is usually a venous thromboembolism that travels from the legs to the lungs. If not effectively treated, pulmonary embolism leads to pulmonary hypertension. When it goes into the lungs, so the pulmonary vessels are blocked. So there is a hypertension in the pulmonary circuit. The right lung faces this increased pressure. This, it strains the right heart, uh, sorry, the right heart, there is an increased pressure in the right heart. It strains the right heart and can result in a heart failure because when the right heart is involved, there is less oxygenated blood going into the left heart and there is less cardiac output, so the patient goes into a heart failure. Majority of the VTE develop during or after a stay in the hospital. A prolonged stay, there can be a chance of DTE because the legs are not working and the chances of a pulmonary embolism which is there, which occurs due to a deep brain thrombosis. There can be a deep brain thrombosis of the legs because the legs are not moving. Lastly, the lungs can cause a heart failure. Virtually all anesthetic drugs are intrinsic myocardial depressant. Sometimes masked by sympathetic stimulation. The blood pressure decreases, but because of pain, the, the catecholamines are liberated into the blood and this increases the blood pressure. So overtly, we don't see a decrease in the blood pressure. The vasodilatory effect of volatile agents like halothane, sevoflurane can re result in severe hypotension. Patients with pre-existing cardiac disease, these effects become much more pronounced. If there is a heart disease previously, these effects become much more pronounced in that patient. St stress and anesthesia and 
surgery frequently unmasks previously undiagnosed heart disease. The patient had been all right, but after GA, the heart failure is becomes prominent because it had not been diagnosed previously. Surgery itself may insult it surgery itself provides many insults to the cardiovascular system and these may be additive with the anesthesia what are the surgery uh, causes of surgical insult there can be loss of blood so there can be a volume shift from the third space, you know about third space, from the third space into the intravascular space. So there is a volume shift. There are substances which are released into the circulation when there is a loss of blood. Patient can become hypothermic because the OT is air conditioned. The patient is, the if the guts are open up, the, there can be a loss of heat from the guts itself and the patient can become hypothermic. Sudden change in cardiac preload and afterload. We had spoken about the pulmonary embolism or atelectasis or bron bronchitis or bronchial asthma which can cause an effect on the cardiac preload and afterload decreasing the cardiac output. The, there can be a myocardial ischemia due to the blood loss and the drugs which are used during surgery can themselves cause heart failure like our anesthetic drugs. I hope I have made it very clear, very extensive about the lung complications post-operatively, but again I am saying if you have any questions, you are free to put in the question and the people here will let me know and I will answer all your questions. Thank you.